probably the biggest message for the legislature, at least going into every session, is the, the annual budget address from the governor, which the state of the state delivered yesterday as we record this. That's exactly right. And most of the people I've talked to have expressed, I guess, satisfaction with the governor's address, what was in it. The content is the main thing there. And I was asked immediately after the address what my thought was. And my answer was that I think the governor said the right things. I think that the objectives, by and large, that he mentioned were good things for us as a state to do. I mean, he mentioned no new taxes. I absolutely support him in that. He mentioned trying to shrink the size of government, not spend all the money that comes in. That's a novel idea that a number of us have brought up different times in other administrations as well, as do why do we have to appropriate everything that we think might be coming in as revenue. I didn't know that was going to be a part of the governor's speech, and I was really pleased to hear that he was on board there, that we don't necessarily need to spend every dollar that the taxpayers send up here. And so hopefully we'll start seeing some more accountability in the budget, some more alignment with needs versus just spending whatever money we think we'll have, which is typically the government approach to tax dollars. So those were good. Now, he did talk a little bit about some infrastructure improvements that might need some review. I'm not sure I'm ready to immediately jump on board with bonding. That's something that has frequently not turned out well for the state. There are some timing issues there that could be right, but we'll need to take a hard look at that and decide as a Senate whether that's something that we believe we would want to commit the state to. But I'm sure the governor will have arguments and reasons why he feels like that's a good idea and why the time is right. Certainly the need is there. I would very much like to see us address the infrastructure needs without having to go outside the budget and outside the revenue stream or increase taxes, but in fact just spend our money differently than we're spending it now. But those were all good things. Uh, He did mention very briefly some of the tort reform issues that I think we'll have before us regarding joinder and venue. I was pleased to hear that. I would have liked to have heard a little more on K-12 through education reforms, but I think he nudged up against that a little bit in his workforce development. I think he realizes that that is an important element of workforce development, is if we're not teaching our children to read Uh, and do at least minimal math, that it's going to be hard to develop them into a workforce. I'm hoping that that will become a significant part of the workforce development agenda. But overall, I was pleased with what I heard. For years we've heard, and I think it ties into what's now referred to as workforce development, about economic development. Are those kind of the same things but different? I think he does see them as the same thing. I know a lot of the colleagues I've spoken to see that as well. Here in the Senate, the President Pro Tem was actually at least at one point, I don't know how this turned out yet, but but he was at least considering actually combining those two Senate committees, recognizing that workforce development really is a part of and is a more appropriate role for the state to play maybe than economic development. Because if we have the right workforce and we have folks who want to employ that workforce here, that is economic development. You just mentioned the word committees. Those assignments for senators handed down this week, I believe you have retained pretty much all of the panels you've been on the last two, if not four years. Yeah, that's right. My committee committees have stayed pretty much the same, which I was happy with that. I am happy to be on the committees that I'm on. The only one that I have lost through my time in the Senate is Ways and Means, and I think that was because we started a new committee called Government Reform, and when I was moved to that committee, I was removed from Ways and Means. So I kind of miss being a part of that fiscal oversight committee, but I'm now chairman of Government Reform. I've served there before and then served as chairman of Commerce for a time, and now am chairman back again of Government Reform reform. And I'm expecting that we'll have some significant bills to handle in that committee and to review and to hopefully improve and get them to the point where we think they'll improve the situation in Missouri. I didn't run through the committees. I'm sorry you you did ask that. I, I am still on education committee. I'm happy to serve there. I believe that's probably one of the most significant things that we need to do in Missouri is get our young people educated. And I think we're not doing well there and that we can do better. I'm also serving on the gubernatorial appointments committee. I think that's an important role of the Senate, and I've always been happy to be able to serve on that committee. I serve on judiciary. I am still on commerce. I'm no longer a chair of commerce, but I will still be on that committee. And these committees, this is where the, the public gets the opportunity to see what goes on and to have a say in it. That's right. Those public hearings are very, very important. We look forward to our constituents and others' constituents, but people from the state who are going to be impacted by the legislation that we consider. We look forward eagerly to their involvement in that committee's hearing process and those public hearings.